let me let me start with this. If I say the word diabetes, what comes to your mind? That you're very sick, that you need medicine to help you, and basically, that's it. Okay, and and then um, I'd like you just to tell me your experience with diabetes. Okay. When I found out I was a diabetic, it terrified me because. I didn't really know anything about it. You don't really hear a lot about it, especially in this area. A lot of people are diabetics, but you just people just don't talk about it. So when I found out I was, I didn't have a clue what to do. Um, How'd you get diagnosed? I stayed tired and run down, and my doctor did quite a few tests and told me, but she didn't really explain into detail what I needed to do and not do. Mm -hmm. So I just let it go. And then one day I was driving down the road and I passed out. Mm -hmm. I was on the way to the doctor because it was almost 500. And I passed Your out. Your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. It was almost 500. And I thought, well, I really need to go and see what's going on. And then when I did, it opened my eyes to that it's something that's really important that you need to check out. You have an accident? No, I was ready to, I, when I came to, I was ready to hit the hill and I just stepped on my brake and started praying and I just turned around in the road and I was fine. You were lucky then. Real lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so then you got to the doctor then mm -hmm. and what did the doctor, what happened at that point? I went to a different doctor actually and uh, gave him part of the details because I didn't want to let them know that I actually passed out. Mm. So I told them that I hydroplaned. <laughs> and uh, he gave me, he checked me out, gave me different medicines, stronger medicines, and gave me more ideas of what to do and what direction to go to get more information. Mm -hmm. And so then ha what happened then? I got to the point, I took it seriously. I started uh, checking my levels, my diabetes levels, more often and started watching what I ate, started exercising. So it has really helped. Once I got into actually um, admitting that I was a diabetic, it was easier. So um, go back to when you first mm -hmm. learned. Okay. And you went home. Mm -hmm. What happened then? I was in tears. I just, I was just devastated. It was like somebody telling you you have cancer and there's no cure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I went home, I just did every day, my everyday life. I didn't check my level. I just ate whatever I wanted. You know, I just ignored it for several years. I ignored it. And what about your family? Did you tell them that you had? Yes. And, and my mother's family, all of her brothers and sisters are diabetics. And... But you just, this, in this area, it's just something you really don't talk a lot about. Why do you think that is? Well, to me, this area, people are closed mouths. They just don't, they don't explain a lot. I mean, they just don't talk about a lot of the personal things. So, do people talk about cancer? They do. They do. It's just a lot of people, when, with me, after I found out how serious diabetes was, I tell people, I mean, you know, about it. And then they'll open up and say, oh, I'm a diabetic too, or my husband is. But it's just people in this area don't know a lot about it. And they just really don't know how to get help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in this area, the culture is southern food, you know, fried potatoes cornbread, all the things you're not supposed to eat. <laughs> That's what people in this area grow up, grew up on. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and, and um, so do you think that there's uh, any risks or, you know, what do you think is causing the disease? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Just the lifestyle of people in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, we're more of a laid back type of people. You know, it's you don't have to be in a rush all the time. And we enjoy food. We enjoy what we eat. We enjoy life. And it, we enjoy religion, church, and when you go, there's always food. 
So when two or three are gathered together, exactly. We eat. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> when, when you use the word laid back, mm -hmm. how would you des describe that? Um, you're not in a rush all the time. I meant when you get up, you expect a big breakfast at lunch. You expect a good meal for lunch. A lot. Well, for me, food was my main thoughts. So, I mean, you just you weren't you weren't in, you're not in a rush in this area. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you go somewhere, somebody's always offering you food, a cake or mm -hmm. pie, homemade pie, homemade cake. So. Now I'm supposing that's still happening. Yes, yes. <laughs> but now, right that's so, right. right. Now so, I've learned so what's changed for you? I still eat what I want, but in moderation. If I want a piece of cake, I only eat like maybe two or three bites. And then I'll walk more. I'll try to exercise more. But I've learned to cut back on the fried food, the comfort foods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So do you have a regular act, exercise act, activity uh, um, pattern? Or? A lot. I do a lot of walking. I do, and I do a lot of um, upper exercises. You know, with the I keep weights. Mm -hmm. Like if I watch TV or something, I keep the weights there so I can use those while I'm watching TV. I'll get out. I have uh, animals, so I'll get out, walk around. Walking dogs. Yes. Yes. I do more activity. Or do they walk you? That's both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and do you do it by yourself, or you have someone who does it with you? No, well, I most of the time I do it by myself, but I have gotten some friends, and we've started walking together, just as a routine to get out, because a lot of my friends are diabetics, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, where do you walk at? In Honecker, there's a football field. You can walk around that football field. Um, it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. Where I live, it's very secluded, so you can just get out and walk. You just have to worry about the bears or the coyotes, mm -hmm. but... Well, that is a good yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> really good. But, yeah. And, and uh, uh, so how often do you meet these friends and then walk around? There? A couple times a week. So it just depends on their schedules, my mm -hmm. schedule, mm -hmm. so... But we just enjoy it. It gives you a time to socialize. Exactly. And have have yes. a little fun conversation. Yes. Now y'all don't go out for a snack after. No. <laughs> no. That's before. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Um, do you um, uh, get support from people in your family? Yes, I do now. Okay. After I started taking it serious myself, I get I get more support. I have one sister, and uh, she she's my moral support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, you? Have some children? No, no children. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, a spouse. Yes. Yes. And I get support from him, and he recently learned that he's a diabetic, so he's depending on what I've learned to help him mm -hmm. in his lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. How's that so working? It's going great. Yeah, it's going really good. That's good. Yes, That's really good. it helps if you have support. Yeah. What what ways do you think it helps? Let's talk um, about that a little bit. Well, with him also a diabetic, it's easier for like our meals. Now, before I had to fix different things because he didn't want to eat what he thought was diabetic food, which it's not. But mm -hmm. he's come to realize you can still enjoy what you eat. Mm -hmm. So. Have you had a chance, you or him, uh, had a chance to talk to a dietitian? Yes, I have. I've talked to a dietitian. I've learned the difference in proteins and uh, carbohydrates and the different things that you should eat and mm -hmm. watch your carbohydrates, things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you count carbohydrates? <gasps> yes, yes, I do. I read the labels and I drink plenty of water. <laughs> So you're doing some big yes, changes. Yes, really, because huh? my my diabetes, the A1C, was at 10. And now I've gotten it down to 6.5. Excellent. Yes. That's really, really good. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you feel better. Yes, a lot better. 
you don't but you don't realize it when your diabetes is so high all you want to do is sleep mm -hmm. you know you, you feel sluggish you don't feel like doing anything but I've learned since my diabetes is going down I'm also losing weight mm. and that's great too mm -hmm. and being more, a little more active exactly yeah. yes yeah so all of it works hand in hand yeah. have you ever had a problem with depression yes uh, it's kind of a common thing. Yes. With yes. diabetes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. And you have to take medicine. Or? I take Celexa. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm assuming it's a mild antidepressant, mm -hmm. but that's, I take that. And it helps. Yes, it does. It helps a lot. Yeah. It's kind of interesting the way um, <clears throat> if you get feeling depressed, mm -hmm. then. You tend to sleep, and then you tend to eat, exactly. and, and not exercise. So, exactly. you know, sometimes our mental health really is an important part. Exactly. Yes. Did your doctor talk to you about that? Yes, he has. He's been great. Yes. And um, if I have questions, I make notes, and then when I go see him, he's there. He answers whatever I need to have answered. He was the one that recommended me to see a dietitian. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Uh, have ahead. you seen a specialist? Have you gone to an endocrinologist? No, no. But I do go to a support meeting once a month for diabetes, mm -hmm. and it's really informational. Okay. How long have you been doing that? A couple of years. Have you? Mm -hmm. Did your husband go with you? No. Okay. But I think he's going to start. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Good. And what do you get out of those meetings? You really, you have the support there. You see other people that have the same issues that you have, and at the meetings are very informative. They give us handouts, they uh, usually do our A1T, A1C test, sometimes they'll do a cholesterol test, but it's just really informative, it's great. So it's a good way for you to monitor what's going yes, on? Yes, yes. Every month and exactly. when you're as well. Um, earlier you said that people don't talk about the disease. Exactly. So what happens when this support group gets together. Well, that's surprising what, because other people there have the same thing that you have. So once you start discussing it, everybody in that group will open up. And they also give you hints. They'll say, well, I've, I've done this to help. I've done that to help. Just like with me, my doctor, doctor recommended apple cider vinegar pills. And that has really helped bring my diabetes level down. Mm -hmm. With that, that, I mean, that's one of the things that helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really informative. Good, good. Um, do you think there's risk factors in the larger community here? For diabetes? diabetes. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, to a point. For, like I said, um, a lot of people in this area are related to each other. So I'm, to me, I feel like that's it's hereditary. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, and then everybody's lifestyle is, like I said, everybody, anywhere you go, they offer, sorry, that's they something. offer you, you know, food, something to drink. I didn't get it. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We always forget about those things. <laughs> That's what editing helps. We can take okay. that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so um, uh, there's a fair number of fast food restaurants in the area. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have any concerns about that? Well, yes, because it's too easy to go in and get something that's full of calories. Now, they are making it healthier, you know, different uh, varieties on the menus, so that helps. Before I go in and order a Big Mac, a large order of fries, a Coke, now I go in and get a salad, um, a Diet Coke, or water. Mm -hmm. So it makes a big difference when that availability is there. So you have some healthier choices. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, a lot of communities are having uh, problems with uh, young children gaining yes. weight early. Yes. You see that as a problem here? Yes, definitely. Well, tell me about what you see. Um, can I answer Maybe a board. Sorry. <laughs> Hello? Hi, honey. How are you in? Okay, but I'm in the middle of uh, my diabetes interview. 
That's okay. That's okay. Can I call you back? Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Somebody checking up on me. Yeah, so. I, I get a few of those calls every day. So, all right. So, um, I was asking you about uh, uh, what your experience is in seeing children. In the yes. Um, with that, you see, it's getting healthier, but I notice a lot of the uh, rewards for children is food. Well, and that's what it was with me, you know. If, like, I teach a Sunday school class, so what I do, I was bringing the wrong types of food, comfort food, for the kids. Mm -hmm. So, I've learned to do better with that. And uh, this area, you know, it's like, well, if you do a good job, if you make good grades, we'll go to McDonald's or we'll go to Pizza Hut. Mm -hmm. So, What would you suggest as a, uh, an option? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe something different something for games you know activities like badminton sets tennis sets different things to get the kids moving more mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think that would help a lot mm -hmm. and the parks the parks in the area are getting a lot better more oriented towards for kids to enjoy themselves for more activity mm -hmm. uh, are you a ball fan no. Okay. I, you know, a lot of communities have highly competitive. Yeah. I didn't know if you participated no. in any of that or not. No. Do you think that there are things in the community that uh, cause diabetes? Hmm. Or, or risk factors? Probably risk, risk factors. I know, like in a lot of communities in this area, there's no public places, no parks for people to actually get out and walk. You know, no sidewalks. Like here in town, there's sidewalks, but a lot of areas, you know, there's just no place for older people mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. out and walk or bicycle, ride bicycles, things mm -hmm. like that. So we do need more things in the area for the older people mm -hmm. to do. Um, do you think there's things that, that schools or workplaces might be able to do to prevent diabetes? To help, yes. Um, I worked at AT&T and we actually have a gym there mm. with the um, just the different things you can go in like on your lunch hour, you can go in early, you can stay late you know when you're mm -hmm. not working and actually use the gym. Mm -hmm. They have a treadmill, they have the stair stepper. And do you see many employees doing that? Yes, definitely. Yes, so it is a big benefit. And do, does uh, the boss, the bosses, they kind of encourage that? Or they, they actually, yes, and they use it a lot. We mm -hmm. have a lot of young, uh, the bosses are, you know, a younger generation, mm -hmm. and a lot of them take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You ever have any uh, classes? You still work for at and No, on my back. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Well, when you did work there, mm -hmm. were there uh, were there classes about how to prevent disease or how to take care of disease? No, no. Just to, just to exactly. Care. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you have any ideas about what things schools might do? Uh, well, I think they need to get the physical education definitely back into a main concept for the classes because uh, there a lot of them are more on the mental for you know the tests they have to take and all that mm -hmm. so i think when we were growing up we had recess we had a lot of different things that the kids don't do now mm -hmm. when you were growing up did you take your own lunch to school yeah uh, no I, well i actually was close enough to school to, to go home so we ate, I ate lunch at home okay mm -hmm. yeah not my children do that anymore. no no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and you belong to a church, yes, and uh, maybe some other. other yes, groups. I'm actually in a uh, senior citizens group also. Are you? Mm -hmm. um, and what do you see happening there around promoting health? At the senior citizens, mm -hmm. not really a lot. We it's an older group of people. We enjoy each each other's company, so that gets everybody out. So really, that promotes the health. Mm -hmm. by everybody getting together and we um, 
We just have a lot of good food. So <laughs> there it goes back to food. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And is there care taken for, because I imagine many people are on special diets. Mm -hmm. they, no. Not for sen not at our particular senior citizens group. So that would be an area to... To think about. Uh -huh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it would be great if we had a walking trail or something mm -hmm. so that, you know, as we get together we could get out there and mm -hmm. and uh, walk, exercise. Yeah. Um, and what about your church? Do you do anything special there that uh, uh, helps promote health? No. No. We don't. So on Sunday morning, the minister doesn't talk about uh, taking care of what you eat and no. do? No, in our minister, he's actually a diabetic also. A lot of people that go to my church are diabetics, but uh, we just, we don't even discuss it, doesn't which would up. be a good thing. No, does it come up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do people talk about cancer? No. Not really, okay. but you do. But now that you mentioned it, you do, do hear a lot more about cancer than you do about diabetes. Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? I think there's not a lot known about diabetes, and it's just something like I said before. Once you you're diagnosed with it, it's sort of devastating, and you you don't know where to go for answers. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions of things that we could do better? That, need, that might have helped you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, diabetes class or a dietitian, you know, going to a dietitian, having diabetic support groups, things like that. Mm -hmm. and just more generally, more information about diabetes, mm -hmm. more pamphlets that people could actually pick up and read mm -hmm. on their own. So you don't see things in the community even that you could pick up and read. No, no, not very much. Does your doctor's office have information? They do. You? They do. They have little booklets on the on the in the offices that you're welcome to take. Uh -huh. The complimentary books, and they are interesting. But nobody kind of points you and says, "No, let's talk about." This. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, if you've, I've been talking to a lot of people and interviewing many people in different places and. A lot of times the idea of church comes up. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you had any suggestions about things that might happen at your church, you know, or the churches in the area that mm -hmm. you think would be helpful for people just to, to think more about their health. Exactly. I think it would be helpful if we did bring it up in church more. And, you know, had small educational classes. Mm -hmm for the church members to attend, mm -hmm. even before church or after church, or for the pastor to bring it up, and have more pamphlets available in the churches. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the ministers locally would be open to doing that? I think they would. So how, do we, how do we make that happen? Hmm, that's a good point. <laughs> um, well, Maybe when uh, mention it more to the doctors, let them have pamphlets available to take to the people to take to their own churches. Mm -hmm. And word of mouth mm -hmm. is a lot. Well, word of mouth is so important. Yes, it? yes, it is. What happens in this community? Is there? Do you depend on word of mouth more than exactly? The news? Exactly. Yes. It's like if someone gets hurt or a death or sickness, um, people just call each other and then that person will call somebody else, it just snowballs so to get help mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. And I think that would help if we had you know, more information available mm -hmm. for the diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're part of the support group, but you're not part of the Diabetes Coalition. Do you know about the Diabetes Coalition? No, I don't know. No, I don't. Okay. So, I'll tell you about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> There's a, a Diabetes Coalition and, and uh, Chuck um, um, Price, yes. blanking on his name. Chuck Price is the president okay. of that. And he's also 
comes to your support meetings. So yes, you, you have met him, and yes. Rebecca actually is involved in the coalition. So this is a group of uh, people who are really working together to try to make some changes in the not just okay. not just a support group, but to make some changes in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, they were looking for some good active members, so oh, okay. you would seem to be perfect to, oh, okay. to come and join with that group. Uh, they're going to be looking at things they can do, you know, in local churches and local places. So, okay. Yeah, Chuck did mention something about that, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't really go into detail with him. Okay. Yeah, actually, he's my husband's cousin. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, ask him some more questions yeah. and ask him yeah. how you can get involved. Okay. Right? Okay. Because uh, I think that I think you would enjoy the experience. Exactly. And okay. you would find some other people to, you know, and, you, and it would be a different kind of involvement than uh, exactly just going to the support. Group. Exactly. Now we actually had uh, members from Chuck's uh, office come to one of our senior citizens, and they brought their machines for. Um, the A1C testing mm -hmm. and the cholesterol testing and blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So we actually had them come to our senior citizens. We have about 70 people that attend it. Uh, Is that here in Lebanon? It's in Honecker. Okay. We have a, a meeting two Fridays a month. Okay. So we have different people that come in mm -hmm. and talk to the people. But and how far is the how far is the senior citizen office from the football field that you walk on? Probably ten miles. Oh, so it's pretty much pretty far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else close by that could be a not in our area. Yeah. It's really it's a rural area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little challenging sometimes, it's, especially if you're exactly. right up against a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and I live on top of a mountain. And yeah. my husband and I were walking mm -hmm. until we started seeing bears and the coyotes. So that sort of kind of discouraging. Exactly. Now that's something city people don't think about. Yeah, they don't have to, do they? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I think I've asked all of the questions I uh, really need to ask. Is there anything else that I didn't that you think is important to share? I no, I can't think of anything right now. I'm sure when I leave, I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, call back. Okay. We're, we're always okay. welcome to hear more. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're doing really well. Well, thank you. And I hope that we can get you engaged in the coalition, too, because I think, I really think you would enjoy some of the things they're going to be working on and doing. Yeah. I'm not sure what those are going to be, but exactly. I, I think that you'll enjoy that involvement. Yeah. Now, they do have, uh, with the diabetic support group, um, once a year for the children mm -hmm. in Russell County, they have a, a diabetes camp mm -hmm. day, and that's going to be this Saturday mm -hmm. out here in Lebanon. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. So will you go and... I usually go. I usually go and uh, volunteer to help with the kids. Uh -huh. And I, my nieces and nephews are small, so I get their families to bring them uh -huh. so that they can learn more about diabetes because I don't want them to end up with diabetes if they can help it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Something we need to try to nip in the bud before. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Patty, for coming in. I really thank appreciate you. it very thank much. You. Nice to meet you. And